Yes? You want something? Oh, oh, right, we're, uh, we're doing, uh, the first installment of, uh, B-Money's Horror 101. Uh, today we're going to be talking about, uh, horror periods and the era they were made in and how that influences them. Influences them. Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the first installment of B Money's Four One O One. Today we're going to talk about uh, how time periods affect horror films as far as plot and, and so on. Now it goes without saying the goal of a horror film is to you know make uh, people you know scared and unsettled. So it goes without saying that um, wouldn't you want to use something that's you know frightening for that time period to frighten people of that time? Mm, that's kind of a weird way to explain it. Alright, I'll put it like this. There is nothing scarier than watching the news, really. Because every now and then it's just... Well, not every now and then, pretty much on a daily basis, it's just force-feeding fear. That's how it's been for the last several decades. So what you see in the news that's scary at a certain time is usually reflected in the horror movies because that's what people are afraid of. Um, I mean, the news, it's... Pretty much the biggest, you know, it's probably the most lucrative uh, industry in within the horror realm. I mean, honestly, like every other story is just like. This just in: crystal meth on your children's playgrounds. Why children should not go to school ever. This just in, butter gives you cancer. Nostalgia, the silent killer. While mass hysteria like that is probably one of the biggest plagues to mankind, it has brought us some very good and very solid interesting horror plots in the last several decades. Uh, so let's just get down to the history of uh, horror movies and their time periods. Um, whenever, you know, the, whenever film as a medium first started, you know, coming in, uh, basically your early horror movies were just retellings of, you know, classic gothic Victorian uh, literature in movie form, so, you know, you, that's where you see your classic, uh, Mary Shelley Frankenstein's, Bram Stoker's Dracula, uh, some Lord Byron stuff like that. So, the, those don't really reflect the time period, because I don't think people were still, you know, I don't think until film, uh, those stories were very relevant to, uh, the, you know, late 19th century, uh, American, well, I'm just going to assume this is American, because I'm going based on American culture, for the most part, on this. So, from about uh, early 1900 to about 1940, it's pretty much just retellings of these classic horror tales. Around the 40s, you start to see the invention of the B-movie, which... Come on. My name is B-Money. Check it. Uh, but, yeah, that's when, uh, they started going ridiculous with the plots, you know, Son of Dracula Part 7 and whatnot, and, you know, that tradition still holds strong till today, but, uh, that's irrelevant. I don't know what, I mean, I guess during the 40s, uh, I'm not sure what was going on in that particular decade to make, you know, silly movies like that. Of course, at the time, people loved them, they took them completely serious, but, moving on to the 50s. Now, the 50s is probably one of the more interesting decades when it comes to horror. I mean, everyone thinks of the 50s as this, you know, nice, wholesome time, you know, just good old-fashioned white picket fence America. But, uh, and recently, uh, movies have been doing a lot of period pieces on the 50s and showing a much darker side, which 
I wasn't around in the 50s, so I couldn't really tell you much about that. But uh, we see in uh, horror films from the 50s, uh, like uh, the Invasion of the Body Snatchers, which is totally a message about, you know, big red scare, a, a fear of a communist America. You know, that's pretty much very blatant in that film. Uh, and another thing that they're worried about is uh, nuclear explosions, and you see that in films like... Um, oh yeah, like the early, uh, the earliest zombie flicks, you know, not the 30s zombie flicks, the 50s, where it's, uh, you know, radiation from a certain star causing the dead to come back from the death. And we also see it in movies like the original Fly, not the Jeffrey Goldrush remake, though that was pretty good. We see a lot of just uncertainty in the future and I'm guessing the 50s was a very frightening time to grow up despite you know how Leave it to Beaver portrayed it. Uh, moving on to the 60s. Uh, now the 60s is really the birth of the modern horror film with Hitchcock and Wes Craven getting started and such and George Romero. So let's start with Hitchcock. Okay, I have a little timeline I drew up. I'll probably post pictures of it later if you want to get a more in-depth look and you can read my handwriting. Alright, Hitchcock with American Psycho. It was the early 60s. The very early 60s. It was 1960, actually. And uh, one of the things that I believe uh, reflected uh, society in American... or not American Psycho, in uh, Psycho was the idea of a cross-dressing killer. That idea of... Uh, awkward and forbidden sexuality being expressed in the free love era. And so I think that was a big part of uh, the ethos behind American, or behind, I keep wanting to say American Psycho, I'm sorry folks, behind uh, Psycho. And next we have uh, The Birds by Hitchcock. Uh, I don't think avian flu was a big deal then, so I mean I just thought it was noteworthy so I put it down there. Alright, uh, moving on to George Romero's Night of the Living Dead, the original, black and white. Now, I've mentioned this in a past review, I think it was on the remake that uh, Tom Salvini did, but there's a very strong uh, anti-segregation message within the original Night of the Living Dead, and you don't really see it until the very end of the movie, where the black protagonist, which in 1960, you know, that was a big deal, to have a black hero in a film. And uh, the uh, the protagonist is uh, killed by the police, even though he's not infected as a zombie. And the police can obviously tell that he's not a zombie, but they carry him out of the house on hooks because they don't want to touch him. It's just a very powerful message in that film. And it was during the early 60s, and that is probably one of the stronger examples I have on uh, an era affecting uh, horror movies of that generation. I'm going to cut this uh, segment right here. I will be back some other time with uh, the 70s and 80s. Well, i got to finish the 60s, but I'll do that next time. This has been BMA's first episode of 4101. See you next time.